In this tutorial, we will implement a lockpick device. If you want more videos like this, don't forget to like, subscribe, and share. If you want to access the code or the assets of this tutorial or looking for help, you can check our Patreon in the description. Let's continue with the tutorial. Hi everyone, in this tutorial we are going to do a lockpick device. So this is a really, really easy to use device that you can plug, plug in to any kind of game that you have. Um, so basically it, it, it includes a little lockpick minigame and when the player that's you know interacting with it succeeds it like triggers a um on unlock trigger so the the, the lockpick device itself is going to trigger this on unlocked trigger and then with the with the um unlocking player and you can use that um like you you can use that event uh, to do anything that you want for this simple example i'm just going to grant an apple to the player and then uh, the the lockpick is going to be like uh, disabled so it, basically you just uh, the player is just interacting with the lockpick with a button right so the button is going to be disabled but um you can reset it again uh, by using this lock reset trigger by triggering this it's going to reset the lock and you know each time it's going to be do a new random uh, lock sequence but of course since you know it's just three of them uh, it's not that hard uh, you know uh, so be in you know keep that in mind and it's you know really easy to set up you just need a you, know, you just need two triggers and a button and we have like four textures um for this which you know you can set your own as well so they're all editables and what we have is you know a texture for the lockpick a texture for the spring and you know texture for the that background the lockpick area and then we have a like circle a gray circle where we you know light lit up and we also write the um like sequence on it um and yeah so if you want to get our you know you can use your own textures but if you want to get ours and also the code as well code file as well you can check our patreon uh, check our patreon in the description all right now, so this is, this includes a lot of like async functions uh, to animate the springs and the lockpick. Um, so here we have a, a data, a minigame data. Basically, uh, this defines the, the state of the um, current lockpick for the player. And then, you know, we then uh, like separate, separate that Mm, lockpick canvas into widgets that we also like uh, track their state of so that's why we have a lock widget and then we have the agent data which is just just the canvas and you know if the canvas is on the ui or not you already seen those and then we have like separate maps uh for all of these so in on begin we just listen to the events and we you know shuffle the lockpick order and you also shuffle it at each reset um and when it's interacted um we initialize the data if there's no data and then we create the canvas we show it and you know after the canvas is created the player is going to interact with the canvas and then the uh, you know state will uh, play out the animations will play out so here in the canvas creation function we do a little bit different thing we lay out the widgets first then uh, widgets and the buttons and then we subscribe to the to the button events and then we just you know in an old-fashioned like um, sequential way we just lay out the canvas slots and the, we plug in the widgets we plug in their offsets and stuff like that 
you know, if you want to customize this, you just need to, you know, use your own textures. So this is kind of a specific thing. So that's why there is no like more editable values for you to customize the layout and stuff. <clears throat> and then we uh, fill in the widgets uh, and widgets, you know, widget state um, states, and then you know the mini game state for this agent, and then we return the canvas. <clears throat> and let's first come to the button events because that's how like we interact with this. So when the quit button is clicked, we just quit the quit the lockpick uh, mini game lockpick canvas. So if when we click on left, it moves the lockpick to left. If when we click on right, it moves the lockpick to right. You know, if there is any place to move, which it's called which it calls async move lockpick stick. So it just this just moves the lockpick horizontally and then after moves it uh, after it finishes the movement it just um, like breaks this loop and then in the unlock button click so this is where we move the stick vertically move the um sorry to move the lockpick stick vertically so basically we are like clicking the spring with that lockpick stick and if it's the correct uh, string we are moving the string up and if it's not then it's not going to do anything you know they, I mean the, the the stick will move but the spring won't right and just exact and you know when if when that's the correct one we are like updating the state of the circle and <clears throat> so we are and if so where is it okay and then for the item we are so for the widgets what we are doing is we are calling the unlock or the lock asyncs so these are actually i believe yeah these are uh, these handle the uh, movement of the springs right and in the unlock function if we detect that we have unlocked the last uh, spring then we are disabling we are basically like finishing it uh, finishing the lock pick mini game here so we are just triggering the on unlock trigger we are disabling the button then we are removing the vision right um you know the animation part of it could be could be looking a bit scary but the the base logic of it it's pretty simple and you will see uh when like how the base logic of it's simple when playing with it <coughs> but so let's me let me show the entire code again from bottom to up. <coughs> so, yeah, this is where we move the stick horizontally. This is where we create the canvas, laying out all those slots. All right, and then the creation of the widgets, and then the couple of the device events, and then the editables and the data definitions, and that's all with the code. And let me continue with the playtest. Oops. So. All right. Okay. So now I come here and can see it okay it worked on the first try <laughs> so i just you know it randomly worked so okay that this is really low chance that i'm hitting all the correct ones but yeah so i got the apple right and i can't use it because it's disabled but 
I can trigger it again. And let's try the same sequence again. You can see that it's not working, right? Because, you know, it creates a random one each time. So maybe this will work. Yeah. So you can see that it also like registers the state. So like if I make a mistake, uh, it's going to move it down, but to make it be like easier, we still made the state um, visible so that, you know, it's not that hard. Um, so you can hit it again and then you can come back. You can hit this one and then you can come back here, hit this one and then you got your apple, you know, or whatever you do. Um, and yeah, so, and I can reset it again and then it's going to be, a, you know, a new, a whole other new um, lockpick and I can, you know, I can like play and then I can quit. Then I can try opening it again. Of course, it's going to be the same state. So it's, this should work. Right. Okay. Yeah. And I can quit. Um. So yeah, this was a, a you know, it's one of those Swift tutorials, although the device itself is not so much, uh, you know, especially the, the animation part, but the base logic of it is really, um, really not that complex. And so, yeah, that was all. Um, to access the code or the assets of this video, you can check our Patreon. So, thanks for watching. Like, subscribe, and share if you've enjoyed. And also leave a comment on what tutorial you would, you would want to see next. See you later.